Today we're going to be doing proportions. A uh, proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equal. You've already done ratios. And uh, if you remember, ratio is just 6 to 2, something like that, or 5 to 3. Excuse me, that's dots right there. And Or you could write uh, 5 to 3, like that. So those are ratios. You're used to having those. Now you're going to be able to write proportions, and proportions mean that two ratios are equal. Okay, The ratios have to be equal for it to be a proportion. So here's an example. 10 over 20 is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, you know, 10 over 20 is equal to a half, and this is equal to a half, so you can see that these two are equal. All right, so... Okay, one method of testing where the ratios form a proportion is to write both ratios in simplest form. Then see if they're equal. So let's look at this one. Let's see. Did you see a movie this weekend? Class A, 10 people said yes. 24 people were in the class. So it says for each class, write the ratio of the number of students who saw the movie to the total number of students. 10 people saw the movie. and there were a total number of 24 students. In the second class, class B, 24 people saw the movie and 60 people were in the class. So, how do we find out if this is a proportion? Okay, Let's see what this red thing down here, I think I just asked that question. Do the ratios form a proportion? So we look at this and let's reduce this one. Both of these are divisible by what? Yes, both of them are divisible by 2. So let's divide both of them by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 24 divided by 2 is 12. Over here, both of them are divisible by 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. And 60 divided by 12 is 5. So let's look at these. 5 twelfths, 2 fifths, are those equal to each other? No, they're not. So these don't form a proportion. Okay? Let's look at some examples here. Do 10 over 12 and 40 over 56 form a proportion? Well, let's reduce 10 over 12. 10 and 12 are both divisible by 2, so that gives me 5 over 6. 40 and 56. Let's see. Both of them are divisible by 2, so that gives me 20 over 28. Both of those are divisible by 2, so that gives me 10 over 14. And both of those are divisible by 2, so that gives me 5 over 7. So are 5 over 7 and six, 5 over 6 the same? No, they're not. So this is not a proportion. What about 42 over 56 and 56 over 64? So we go 42 and 56. 42, look, I'm going to go short with you on this. And 42 and 56 are both divisible by 14. So 14 goes into 42 three times, and 14 goes into 56 four times. 56 and 64. What, do, what goes into 56 and 64? Yes, eight. 8 goes into 56 7 times, and 8 goes into 64 8 times. So do those form a proportion? No, they don't. Alright, the second method, and the one that you're going to be using most often, is uh, for determining whether two ratios form a proportion, is called a cross products. Okay? Are you familiar with cross products? So what you do is you've got 5, 6 equals 10, 12. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is multiply the 5 times the 12, and that gives you 60. And then you're going to multiply 6 times 10, and 6 times 10 gives you 60. So since 60 equals 60, that means that yes, this is a proportion, because that came out to be equal. So this is a proportion. Yay. Okay. Your turn. You do this one. Do these ratios form a proportion? Remember what you're going to do is multiply across. Okay? Multiply across the 5 times the 54 and the 9 times the 30. Your turn. 
Okay, so we go 5 times 54. That's 270. And 9 times 30. That's 270. So yes, this is a proportion. Oh, I messed up. Look at here. I was supposed to do this. I, want, I don't want you to lose this, so let's see. 30 times 9 equals 5 times 54. 270 equals 270. Is it a proportion? Yay! Yes, it is. I almost messed up, and you didn't get to see that. All right, what about these? Do these ratios form a proportion? Form a proportion. Do these ratios form a proportion? Threw me off that I left off that M right there. All right, so what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Your turn. Pause the video and get back with me. So we go 7 times 65. Do I have it? Yes, I do. 7 times 65 equals 8 times 55. 7 times 65 equals 8 times 55. We just do the cross products. 8 times 55, 7 times 65. Okay? All right. Ooh, I bet we've got another one down here. 7 times 65 is 455. 8 times 55 is 440. Are those equal? Why, of course not. They are not equal. And so if they're not equal, that means that we're not happy. <laughs> All right, now how can you use this? Your boat engine needs 5 fluid ounces of oil mixed with every 2 gallons of gas. So you've got a boat. The engine needs five fluid ounces of oil mixed with every two gallons of gas. And you've got a gas container. And the gas container has 12 gallons of gas mixed with 34 fluid ounces of oil. Can you use the gas in this container in your boat? So let's write it out. See what we've got here. Five fluid ounces of oil. If you put fluid ounces on the front top on this side, you've got to put fluid ounces on the top on this side. So the 34 goes on top. It has 12 gallons, I mean, it, five fluid ounces with two gallons. So we put the two gallons on the bottom. If we put gallons on the bottom here, we got to put the 30, I mean, the 12 gallons on the bottom here. So how do we do this? We go five times 12 and two times 34. Five times twelve is what? Is sixty. Two times thirty-four is sixty-eight. Those are not equal, so that means no. This does not form a proportion, and you do not want to use this mixture in your boat because it'll mess it up. Okay, see how you do on your homework. 